Hey guys, Dr. Chuck back with you today to uh, answer a question uh, I got recently, which was to explain the refrigerant safety classification number. So the uh, safety classification is really part of ASHRAE standard 34 uh, refrigerant listing process. So when someone develops a new refrigerant and puts it through the ASHRAE um, process per standard 34, one, this process assigns it's a number. Uh, which reminds me, I've I got a question to exp to ask me to explain how this refrigerant naming and numbering system uh, was developed and worked. So I'll have to do that in another video. But as far as the safety classification, uh, it's really a two-part system. It's a letter and a number combination. So we'll talk about the first part uh, first. The letter, it's either A or B, and that is based on the toxicity of the molecule, of the refrigerant gas that's being uh, submitted to ASHRAE. So A is lower toxicity and B uh, higher toxicity. And for the most part, uh, I think the refrigerants you're all familiar with and have worked with uh, over the years have been A1 refrigerants, things like 410A, uh, R22, 404, 134A, uh, even the older ones, 12. 502. If you happen to work on B or have heard of any class B refrigerants, it's probably ammonia. So the toxicity basis for separating refrigerants and grouping them according to the standard is based on something known as the OEL or occupational exposure limit. And that is really the exposure concentration averaged over an eight hour workday that's designed to protect healthy workers throughout uh, a lifetime of work, throughout their career. So a couple things, what it is, it's focused on workers and it's focused on chronic or long-term uh, exposure concerns. What it's not, it's not uh, designed uh, to assess health or safety assessments for short-term exposures, things that I would uh, imagine are more likely in an emergency, a catastrophic loss or a containment loss. Uh, and it's not designed to assess impacts on the general public or the general population. Workers are assumed to be healthy because they're going to work every day. But when you talk about general population risk, you have a lot more people with underlying health conditions, other concerns. So while the, uh, a or B classification is useful, it's probably not the only thing you want to look at when you're considering what refrigerants and what systems you're going to be put to different places and spaces. You may want to look at something like the acute toxicity exposure limit, or ATEL, and that really takes a look at toxicity with attention to lethality, cardiac sensitization, uh, anesthetic effects, other escape impairing mechanisms that could occur, and it'll give you a lot more information around really uh, uh, assessing the risks of a particular refrigerant. But again, to summarize, the classification system we're familiar with, it's A or B, lower toxicity, higher toxicity. So moving on to the second part, it's a number designation that's combined with the letter that addresses the flammability risks. So in the simple oversimplification, you would say it's A, 1, 2, or 3, or B, 1, 2, or 3. So one, nominally, we would say is non-flammable. Three is a very highly flammable or explosive. And two is somewhere in the middle. But uh, there's a lot going on in that area. So let's dive down a little uh, deeper level there. So one is not really non-flammable. The standard language is no flame propagation. And that's no flame propagation based on a test. So it's an ASTM E681 test where you basically mix refrigerant with air in a big flask and you try to ignite it and you add more refrigerant and you up it and up it and you keep trying to ignite it. And if you never get an ignition event, it never burns, then it gets a one flammability, no flame propagation. On the other end of the spectrum, if we jump up to the highly flammable class three, those things, when you put the mixture in the flask, it ignites and it ignites with a very are fairly low concentration, less than 0.1 kilogram per cubic feet uh, is the, the measure. Or if it happens to be a very energetic 
uh, material and give off a lot of energy. There's something called the heat of combustion. And if the heat of combustion of that material is greater than 19,000 kilojoules per kilogram, it also falls into the class three highly flammable category. So class two uh, wasn't a lot of activity there because there weren't a lot of refrigerants that were class two. But in recent years, there's been developed a lot more products and refrigerants that will fall into this two category that they even took a subdivision of category two flammability and created a new category 2L for even lower flammability. And there's a lot of details that go into what makes 2Ls different from 3s, 2Ls different from 2s and 1s. Uh, but it's additional flammability metrics are used to assess that. Things like the burning velocity. So it has a low burning velocity. It can fall into this 2L category. So again, there's a lot of details. I'm going to do another video explaining exactly what 2Ls are, how they are the same and different from 3s, how they're the same or different from 1s. And then more importantly, what's that mean from a practical standpoint on how you apply these, install them, use them, what type of equipment, what type of systems uh, they can go into. I will just leave you for one, uh, one important thought here, and that has to do with, with uh, refrigerant retrofits or conversions. When you're putting in a new gas, into a system that was designed for perhaps another gas, you have to match the safety classification. That is, A1s can only be replaced by an A1. So R22 is an A1. So you need to replace it with an A1 like 438A, 407C. Uh, likewise, 404, 134A are A1s. They have to be replaced by things like 513, 449. Um, a1 for A1. We can't put A2Ls, we can't put A3s into systems designed for A1. That's why those safety, uh, safety standards are there. I hope this was helpful. Again, a lot of other topics uh, I'm going to be uh, bringing forward with these focused, fast, and hopefully informative uh, videos. But I certainly want to hear your uh, thoughts, hear your ideas, hear your topics. Uh, you can email me. And uh, if I can't answer it, I'll find someone who can. I appreciate you taking the time. And again, thanks for stopping by. Talk to you soon. So long.